Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day two of the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe, and I hope you're all having a good morning. I am streaming live from very windy Los Angeles this morning. It sounds like my house is gonna fly away. If you are joining us live on Behance, good morning and welcome, and let us know who you are, where you're tuning in from, and a big good morning to Aaron and Theo and David and Atia and Michael and Rita and Anna and Larry. And if I mispronounce any of your names, I truly apologize. But it's always nice. And Agnes is here who created one of the most amazing Adobe XD animations that I've ever seen. It was bonkers. Um, but it's always nice to see some regulars joining us for the amazing Daily Creative Challenge. It's also really nice to see some brand new people who are just joining us who have never used Adobe XD before. And this is really one of the cool things I love about this Daily Creative Challenge is we're meeting all these amazing people. We're becoming friends. We're in Slack all day, chatting about design, sharing feedback. And uh, Tim is in the house, one of our awesome moderators. We've got people from Pakistan and Switzerland. Anzi is in the house, UK, Lee, one of our awesome Adobe Live peeps. Cool, so what's the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge? Well, we run it for about two weeks and we've done a few of these. And usually when we do these, we offer up a challenge every single day to kind of get your creative juices flowing, build up some new skills in Adobe XD and UI and UX in general. So this week, we're, we're doing things a little bit differently. I'm not gonna tell you exactly how we're doing things differently. Maybe you picked up on it already, but let me hop over. Actually, before I do that, we have an awesome week packed. So I am kicking off the week with our Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge. And then we've got, let me make this bigger because I can't see this. We've got Anna with Paul at nine o'clock. So right after me, they're gonna be doing some really cool Photoshop stuff. Andrew is gonna be with Ashley at 11, and then Sasha is going to be with Paul one more time at one o'clock. So there's a lot of really cool stuff going on right after this. If you're into Photoshop, definitely dive in there. Go on Behance, behance.net slash live. Watch some cool Photoshop stuff. Jason Levine, one of our amazing evangelists who has amazing hair and is a great speaker, is in the, is in the house with us. Welcome. So what are we doing in this daily creative challenge? Well, here's the landing page. Behance.net slash daily creative challenge. If you haven't hit that big blue button at the top yet, press the big blue button. That way you know when we release new challenges. We release it every day at eight o'clock in the morning and I'm here at 8.30 in the morning, bright and early, no caffeine yet. I don't know how I'm doing this. Maybe I'm taking whatever Jason usually takes. Um, and I'm kicking off each day daily challenge. So each day you're gonna receive a challenge and then you're gonna join me at 8.30 a.m. to kick things off. And your task is to prototype and design using Adobe XD and then upload it to Behance using the hashtag or the keyword, whatever you wanna call it, XD Daily Challenge. And you have until March 1st to complete them. But as I always say, you don't really have to complete them all by March 1st. If you want us to review them at the very end next Friday, then you know do your best. But this is really to for you to build up your portfolio, build up your skills. So if you need a few extra days to get these things looking snazzy, take a few extra days. It's not a contest. Now the importance of using the keyword XD Daily Challenge is so we can go on Behance, we can search for this lovely stuff and we can see your entries. And we've had a few really cool design systems. I expected a few less entries than usual because design systems typically aren't very sexy, right? But they're very crucial and important to the overall process of building a product. So this one really stood out to me. This is from Daniel who has some, created some amazing, amazing things in the past and really nice looking design system with some additional colors, some, you know, highlight colors, darker colors, that sort of thing. Icons, this interesting animation, thing. I don't even know what to call it, but it's cool. I like it. Whatever it is, it's cool. Then some bars and controls. It looks really nice. And when you're publishing your final product on Behance and you're including a lot of this design system and you're including colors and character styles, it just adds to the overall presentation that, you know, a client's going to see that stuff and be blown away that you actually showed the progress, which is really nice. So what are we doing today? Well, if I scroll down here, you can obviously grab XD completely for free. 
You can also join us on Slack. I know we were having some issues with the link. There's some caching problems. So clear your cache, press on that button and join us in Slack. And if I hop over here to my Slack channel, here we are. There's 13,687 people. That's a lot of people joining us right now possibly live on Behance. I don't know. There's that's a lot of people. Marissa is in the introduction section who put together all these amazing templates that you've all been working on. So go in there, go in Slack, thank Marissa, say hello, and you know, join the community. And if you want feedback, jump into the design feedback channel. Uh, you know, let us know what kind of feedback you want. Do you want us to critique some of your colors, your character styles? Whatever it is you want, let us know. And then once you receive feedback, turn it around and give some feedback, which is going to be really cool. Kind of pay it forward, right? And then on Friday, Friday we have something cool. So this coming Friday, Talon is going to be live on Behance as at his usual 12 o'clock slot. He's going to be reviewing some of your designs. So make sure to get those in there. Awesome. So that's Slack. A lot of cool people. And what are we doing today? So yesterday we built a design system for a music player mobile app. And today we are blocking out and designing low fidelity artboards for a music player mobile app. Are you kind of getting where we're going with this? If you haven't got it yet, I won't spoil it, but we're going somewhere with this. You, you know nothing. All right, so grab that template, open up Adobe XD and let's do this. So. Here's where we kind of left off yesterday. I did take a few extra minutes to build out my design system. I didn't go crazy because I'm short on time, but I did add a few additional things. You know, I refined my typography a little bit. I refined my colors. I added some additional names because I like being fun like that. We got 99 red balloons, five red balloons because they're not as vibrant. I don't know. I tried to be funny. Feeling blue, Macy Gray, Black Sabbath, and Painted Black. Kind of tried to theme it in a musical way. I have some icons at various different sizes and also I converted these ones down here to symbols and I'll talk about the importance of that in a moment. And Michael Crabtree is in the house. He was joining me live on Behance last week. Welcome, Michael. Uh, here's some bars. Here's some controls that I built out. And then this lovely icon, which I want to say I designed myself, but I just went on Adobe Stock and I, I grabbed it. I don't know. It works, right? So. Today's challenge is to kind of use a lot of this stuff and start building out low fidelity artboards for this music app. And what we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on using assets, using link symbols and character styles, colors and that sort of thing to use in our project, right? So how does that work? Well, we have this design system that we've saved. This one is saved to the cloud. You might have it in the cloud. You might have it locally. Wherever you have it, it doesn't matter because link symbols will work. So let's assume for a second that we wanted, um, what do we want to use as a linked symbol? Well, let's just grab one of these icons for an example, right? This playlist icon. Let's, see, let's say I might use that throughout my document on my music app. So I can just grab this from this document, copy it, head over to this document over here, and I'm just gonna paste it right over here. Boop, there we go. So I've got a linked icon right now. If I go to my assets panel, command shift Y is the shortcut to get there. You'll notice we now have a little link icon right here. And if I zoom in, you can also see it right there. That lets me know that this icon is linked to another document. And the importance of this is if I have this symbol over here, and let's say I'm building out an artboard over here. I put one there. Maybe I have another artboard over here and I've got a, another symbol there, right? They're all the same symbol, right? But what if I want to change it? Well, all I have to do is go back to my design system. Let's say I wanted to change the color or let's say I, I didn't like the highlight color. I want to change across everything. I go to my assets. I find that color. I edit it. And let's say I want to change it to blue, right? I save this design system. It's being saved. It's in the cloud, so it'll save every few seconds that you're inactive. And you'll notice right up here, oh, there we go, it's saved. Now, if I go back to this document that I'm working on, you're gonna notice that that blue, that green icon, let me zoom in, there we go, is now blue. That lets me know that it's a link symbol, but it's also been updated. So in my assets panel, I can just hover over top of that blue icon, and it lets me preview what it's going to look like right? And then I can click on it and it'll update, not just there, but everywhere, which is so cool, right? So let me, let me back out of this because we don't want 
to go back on our, our blue. I like the red. There we go. Perfect. The boop, I did not know. I do. I boop from time to time. It's one of my things. I also say repeat grids a lot, and I don't encourage you to take a shot when I say repeat grids. I'm, I'm not about that life. So let's start building out a few screens. We're going to build out a splash screen, an album view, and maybe a playlist view. So over here, we have um, a screen. We're going to use some assets, we're gonna build out a splash screen. And let me let me stress that this is low fidelity. So it's not gonna look pretty. It's gonna look very bare bones. It's so we can give it to our clients to get some approval. And then we can start making it pretty a little bit later on. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna import some assets. I'm actually gonna just grab all these symbols, copy them, paste them over here so I can use them very quickly. And you're noticing they also come in pasted. This one, I, yep, I don't need this one anymore. Or do I? Yeah, I do. Okay, so they also come in in our uh, assets panel, which is nice. I can also bring in, let's say my colors, so I can bring in all these. Now these are not linked at the moment, but the team is definitely working on building out design systems. So maybe in the future they might be linked, but once they're in here, I can just press the plus button beside colors and it's gonna bring in all of that stuff. And I can also bring in my typography, grab this, copy, paste it over here. There we go, so now I've got some assets got some character styles going on. I'm good to go, right? So what do we want to do first? Well, we, I need an icon. So I'm going to grab this icon here. I do want to make sure it's a symbol. So I'm going to go Commander Control K. It's going to add it as a symbol. And I'll just name this logo small. Beautiful. I'm going to copy this, paste it over here. It did come in as a symbol. And I can just pop it right there. It's letting me know it's updated, but it really wasn't updated. So I'll just click on that. Beautiful. That looks good. Next, we need some buttons. So we want, let's say, a sign up button and a login button. So I'm going to hop back over here. We have a bunch of buttons over here. I've already converted some of these to symbols. So I'm going to grab this one and I might grab this one. So I'm going to hold shift, press on both of those, copy them and paste them. And again, they come over as symbols. So I can very easily move them in place. And you know what? Oh, this is an iPhone 10. Let me, I'm going to actually do this on an iPhone 6, 7, 8 plus artboard. There we go. Just to be a little bit more consistent with this size right here. So I'll just copy these, move them over here, get rid of my iPhone 10. Don't have to worry about the notch because who wants to deal with a notch? I don't. Even though I love my iPhone 10, the notch is, it's there. All right, so I'm gonna move these. And even though these are symbols, text can still be overwritten. So I'm gonna do just write sign up, beautiful. And this one will be uh, log in. Perfect. So we have a splash screen. Nothing fancy, but it works, right? The next artboard we're going to create will be album, uh, an album view. And this is gonna be a little bit more in depth. So what we're gonna do is we're going to grab a few things from our design system. We're going to first grab this down here, which is a, basically a navigation bar at the top or a title bar that will allow me to access a user profile and also settings. Make sure that's a symbol, Command and Control K, copy and paste. And I'll move it into place right around the top of my screen. And these are 16 pixels from the side. If you are using a 16 or eight pixel grid, I'm kind of following, I'm trying to follow that as much as I can. So that's done and I might want some albums. So I'm gonna grab this album uh, right here. Now I'm not gonna convert this into a symbol because we're gonna be using repeat grids or we're gonna be adding elements in it, which is just gonna confuse Adobe XD. So I'm simply gonna copy it as a group, paste it in this artboard. And now I wanna turn this into a repeat grid. So Command and Control R, or you can also press the repeat grid button at the top right. That will convert into a repeat grid. We've got these two handles, one to the right, one at the bottom, and it can simply drag out additional cards just like this. And I might wanna squeeze this in a little bit. Maybe it'll do eight pixels. So we kind of tell uh, the user that there are additional cards over to the right. Great, and I may want another one down here and maybe one more down here. Now, right above, we might want some text. So I'm just gonna simply type out, let's say recently played. And I can use my character styles. Let's say this one that one looks pretty good. I'll use that one. 
And this way, if I ever decide to update these character styles in the future, let's say I really like Comic Sans, right? I can just go in here, Comic Sans, and it's gonna update that text style across my entire document. Of course, nobody likes Comic Sans, so I'm gonna undo that. Now, next, I'm gonna duplicate this downwards. This will be just for you. I'll make sure this is centered. Beautiful. And then one more thing, let's say in the mood, right? Perfect. And you know what? I may want this bold, so I'm gonna edit this. Maybe I will change this to medium. Yeah, medium looks okay. And maybe, yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. Great. All right, so things are looking good. We also need a navigation bar at the bottom. So back over in my document here, we have this navigation bar right here. I am gonna convert this one into a symbol. Command and Control K, copy it and paste it. Sorry, Anthony. There we go. Beautiful. Maybe I'll move all this stuff up a little bit just so we can see. I want to, those, those, those cards just to peek in just a little bit from the top and the bottom. Beautiful. All right. So there we go, we have an album view. And now we might want to kind of showcase, hey, good morning, Paul. Paul's gonna be on live in about 15 minutes with Anna, so definitely stay tuned for that. Now we might want to showcase what it'll look like with when someone drags some of those cards over. And we're not gonna animate it today, but I just wanna showcase what that might look like. So I'm gonna duplicate this downwards. You can do it to the right as well, whichever, you know, whichever floats your boat. And I'm gonna grab this repeat grid and just move it over to the side a little bit so we have a little bit of breathing room. There we go, and there we go. And then tomorrow, when we kind of expand on this a little bit more, I'll actually show you how to auto animate between this artboard and this artboard to kind of give you the impression that you're dragging something across, and auto animate does a great job at that. So next, what we're gonna do is we're going to tackle a playlist screen. So I'm gonna create one more artboard over to the right. This is going to be for playlists, and we're gonna actually just duplicate this symbol over to this artboard. And let's say we'll also duplicate this over here, right? Beautiful. Now we need some content in the middle. So for that, I'm going to go back over to my design system, grab, let's say, the playlist name right over here, copy it, pop it right there. Let me move it up a little bit. That looks good out there. And one more time, just use a repeat grid. Boop. Whoops. I missed it. Command and Control R. Boop. That's better. And drag this down the artboard. Somewhere right now, have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five looks good, five playlists. And then even though it's a repeat grid and you know layout changes update the entire thing, you can also manually update, let's say, uh, text layers. So let's say five songs, 10 songs. And while I'm doing this, let me know, let me know a fun playlist name. And maybe I'll throw that in there. And this is 45 songs. I'm not sure why, but 45 it is. All right, now we need another button. I actually have a button in my assets panel. I can just drag one out here. And this will be to create a new playlist. There we go. This will be create playlist. Beautiful. All righty. So things are looking good. So we have a splash screen. We have album view, which is basically our home screen. And we also have playlists. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure to, this will be home. This will be playlists. Wallowing in my misery. Okay, that's a good one. Wallowing in my misery. And then we've got hip hop. This is why I lo love live streams. All of you just like diving in there. You know what? This one has to be called Boop. All right, we've got rainy day. This is great. And Booping at Adobe. This will be funk, and let me change this one for Natasha's booping at, helps if I spell, booping at Adobe. Beautiful. All right, so I've got things named. Let me make sure home, drag, and this will be splash screen. Now the last artboard I might wanna create, let me actually do this right below, is a login experience. So once someone presses either sign up or login, let's say login, don't need the sign up button, but we will be using basically two of these 
but they're going to be, you know what? They're not going to be these symbols. So I'm going to ungroup these, unlink the symbol. And this will be, let's say your email address. I'm going to move this over to the left. Make this a little bit lighter. Actually, I think I have, there we go. I do have a character style I can use. Beautiful. And you know, the border might be a little bit too harsh for this one. So I'm going to just drop it a little bit. Great. Copy this. And we've got password. Make sure that's justified to the left and lining up. We'll do about 16 pixels over. Yeah, it looks pretty good right about there. Of course, if I had a little bit more time, I would make sure that all the dimensions and the padding and all that stuff are perfect, but we'll leave it at that for now. And then we need one more button for login. So this will be our login button, make sure everything lines up. And you notice those smart guides as I'm moving things around, it's not only telling me that an element is centered in my document, but it's also letting me know that it's spaced properly. And I'm noticing I need two more pixels to get that 15 or 16. And if I hold down my alt key, I can you know easily see that's 16 pixels from that top one and then move this downwards. Beautiful. This will be login. Great. So now, of course, I would probably go through tonight and you know make some fine tweaks. But again, this is our low fidelity artboard. So it's not supposed to be super pretty. It's supposed to just get the job done and you know let our clients or let our coworkers know that this is a splash screen. This will eventually lead to a login screen. We'll probably also have a sign up screen. And then this is an album view with recently played just for you in the mood. And this is what it looks like when you drag something over. And these are our playlists. And all of this was created using our assets from our design system. And if you're not using some sort of a design system, it doesn't have to be super complex, but it definitely helps. Um, Heather is saying, can't wait for rulers in XD. That would be cool. Some sort of rulers or guides or something like that. Uh, might be something the team is working on. Not quite sure. Probably can't say anything, but. Um, and then, you know, once we start building this out, we're going to start using some of our controls, like our switches, our off switch, our on switch, radio buttons, uh, you know, sound, volume, that sort of thing. But having all these elements that are kind of in one place will help tremendously as you're building out your projects. So what have we done today? Well, we've built a splash screen, basically just a logo. We have a sign up button and a login button. The login button will lead to this screen over here, which allows you to enter your email address, password and press login. And there might be, you know what? There might be a little text layer down at the bottom. Forgot password, question mark. And these are all the little things you have to think about as you're building products. We'll make that eight pixels. There we go. Beautiful. Um, there's so many things that as you're designing a product, you're going to realize you probably didn't include, right? And that's kind of why it's so important to start with low fidelity designs, because if you're really going for it and you're doing high fidelity from the beginning, not only are you going to be distracted by all the pretty pictures, but you're probably going to miss a lot of stuff. And if you miss something big, you're going to have to go back and design some really high fidelity stuff from the, from scratch. So get the low fidelity stuff out of the way, make sure you have everything that you need for that product to succeed and then kind of go for it and make things look really cool. So over here we have our home screen. We've got a little profile picture, uh, settings, albums, and then we have a playlist. And I should probably, what I probably have to do is label. So I'll just copy this, copy, paste, and this will be playlists. And I might want that up here near my navigation bar. There we go. So we've completed a few low fidelity designs, but I definitely encourage you to really go crazy as you're, there's Slack. Um, yeah, go crazy. As you're building out these things, think of like what you want in a music app and start throwing that stuff on, on paper or artboards, I should say. And then tomorrow, maybe if we're continuing on this theme, we'll see, we'll, uh, we'll do some more things. Maybe we'll do some auto animate. Maybe we'll get into some high fidelity stuff. We'll see, but stick around for Paul Tranny and Anna coming up in just a few minutes with some Photoshop stuff. I'll see all of you on Slack. Thanks for joining me live on Behance. I'm really looking forward to what you publish uh, later today using the keyword XD Daily Challenge, and I'll see you all very soon.